Hello and welcome here to a new series at macOS 10 screencast.com that is co-produced with free-mac-software.com, a website about all things free for Mac OS X and the iPhone, obviously. Um, in the following series, we are going to take a look at web browsers in general. And in the first episode, we're going to have a general overview of all the different browsers that are out there. And I hope you like the series. Uh, see you. Until next time, you take care. Bye. Browsing the web became, over the years, an integral part of our everyday life. The web became so important for us in so many ways. We socialize, watch movies, do research, chat with friends, upload pictures, listen to podcasts, plan projects, and even do our office work. The internet is a place where we can do so many different things that its ubiquity isn't easy to neglect. Browsers are the tool we use to access this world. And there are so many of them, all with different and also common features. In this series, we're going to take a look at the most commonly used and free Mac browsers and compare their strengths and weaknesses. In this first episode, all we do is really just compare the different browsers. During the next episodes, we're going to look at these browsers more closely. Among all the features of today's browsers are some features all of them share. Bookmarks, for instance, allow you to access sites you visit more often, more quickly. You can even create groups of bookmarks, so you can have a group for news sites and another one for music sites. Some browsers call this feature favorites, but the function is still the same. Most of the browsers also have a special folder they call bookmarks bar. This bar is displayed at the top, right below the area where you usually type in a web address. Bookmarks that you keep in the bookmarks bar allow you to access important sites even quicker because this bar is always visible, but can also be hidden in case you find it annoying or don't use this function. This brings us to another feature most browsers share. They allow you to hide things. Hiding something like the bookmarks bar has the advantage that more space is available for displaying a website's content, which means you don't have to scroll that much. Keep in mind though, many websites have been optimized for smaller screen resolutions, so a website looks the same on many different operating systems and computers. Safari and Chrome, for example, have Lions full screen mode. In this mode, a website is stretched across your entire screen. This is good for smaller computers like a MacBook Air, but looks ridiculous on a 21-inch iMac. Optimizing for smaller resolutions also means that text doesn't spread across 21-inch. Most websites either center the main content or a line left. So all you get on a 21-inch screen is you staring at mainly nothing with a bit of text in the middle. Some people like this kind of focus, some don't. In case you like it and use Safari, you can simply reduce the width by clicking on the left or right side of your screen. This way, text gets much easier to read on a bigger screen in case a website doesn't limit text width, so you don't have to actually move your head when reading a website's content. Let's stick with the top row of icons for a moment. Above the bookmark bar and below the full screen button is an area where you can type in a website's address, search on a search engine, get back and forth of your surf history, or get to your so-called home page. A website that you can define that you want to get back to whenever you desire. Nowadays, these home pages most often default to a search engine like Google. The number of icons in the top row and the functions offered differ from browser to browser also their order. Developers change orders sometimes for design reasons, but the previously mentioned functions are pretty much standard in all browsers. This top row also has many names, and developers seem to think that the more awesome this bar sounds, the more awesome it actually is. What Safari uses to call a location or toolbar is known as Omnibar in Chrome and Awesome Bar in Firefox. Omnibar's name was chosen in Chrome because Chrome location bar is omni-functional. It combines the location bar for web addresses and the search field into one text field. I have no idea why Mozilla chose Awesome Bar as a name, but I think they fear to lose ground in the browser wars and need to sound cool to get more users attracted to their, frankly, rather old platform.
extensions or add-ons as they are called in most Firefox-based browsers, you might switch to a cooler name in the future by the way, allow you to extend the features of your browser. There are extensions for so many things that it would take too long to name all of them in this short overview. Extensions customize how web pages look, block ads, hide unwanted content, protect your privacy by making it harder for ad agencies to track your surfing behaviors. Download YouTube videos, add search engines, especially for Safari since Safari doesn't allow custom search engines to be added and many many more things. I put some links in the show notes that lead to directories that have these extensions listed, ranked and sorted into categories so you find the ones that are more relevant for you. Keep in mind though that these extensions are not required for simple web surfing. As a rule of thumb, if you're happy with your browser the way it is, simply don't install extensions. Most browsers also allow quick access to a technology named RSS, which is an abbreviation for really simple syndication. Websites offer these so-called RSS feeds so you can subscribe to a website. On Mac OS X Screencast, for example, you can subscribe to the website feed or the podcast feed. Once subscribed to a feed, a browser asks these websites regularly whether they got new content available. Let's say you subscribe to a news site and they publish some news. Your browser asks the news site and with RSS the browser can figure out whether or not new content has been published and then offers a method to access these new items. The advantage of a subscription is that you don't have to actually type in that website's address, wait for the page to load and check manually for new stuff. Your browser can do this for you automatically in the background. Most browsers allow you to either read directly in a, let's call it, read view that just displays the new content without loading all the advertising and other things from a website, or you can directly go to the website and read new content there, if you prefer to see their whole design. Tabs are taken as granted nowadays in browsers, but there used to be a time where they didn't have tabs. The reason why I'm talking about tabs here is that some browsers have interesting quirks to them. In Safari, for example, you can reorder tabs with a simple click and drag, but you can also create a new window out of a tab by dragging it out of the tab bar into an empty space on your screen. In Chrome, Google put all tabs on top all together where other browsers display the title of a page. You can also rearrange and drag out tabs to create new windows. Other browsers might not have this feature yet, but eventually are going to implement it to keep up with their competitors. Private browsing is useful when you're using a public computer in a cafe or in the library. With private browsing turned on, a browser doesn't save your surf history or autofill information. Especially the less popular browsers are less likely to have this feature. However, you still might consider these browsers for your own private computer, but be warned when you're on a public computer that doesn't have private browsing. Auto Restore also was a feature that was implemented in most browsers a while ago. This feature saves all open tabs and reopens them in case a web browser crashes or opens. Until Lion, this feature wasn't very well presented in Safari, even though Safari had this feature for a while. The difference was that Safari didn't restore open tabs automatically. You needed to go to History and select Reopen Windows from last session manually every time the browser starts. You could automate this with Keyboard Maestro, but I think it's much easier to go to System Preferences, Keyboard, and create a new application shortcut for Safari. You need to type in the text from the history exactly for this feature to work. So we type Reopen Windows from last session and give it a shortcut. I have this set to Ctrl and R, R for Restore. Now we can simply launch Safari and restore all windows with this shortcut. Plugins are different from extensions. They allow a browser to display media content, videos for example. There are a couple of plugins the system has installed by default, the QuickTime plugin and several others. Our beloved Flash plugin is also one of them. On OS X, these are installed into library, internet plugins. In case you want to get rid of one of these plugins, just delete them from here and restart your browser. 
Here's where Chrome works a bit differently. Google decided to include these plugins directly in the application package. When you click Show Package Contents on the Chrome app and go into Version, Google Chrome, Framework, you see a folder named Internet Plugins. The advantage of having these included within the app rather than the system level is that this way Chrome doesn't have to rely on plugins being installed at all. A user can download the browser and start surfing instantly without worrying about this plugin stuff. The disadvantage is that Google dictates what plugins a user needs. They have already announced that future versions of Chrome won't support H.264 v anymore in favor of their own WebM format, because they think that's what we're going to use in the future. So when you surf with Chrome or the developer preview Chromium, all or most YouTube videos are streamed using the Flash plugin. Last but not least, I'm going to tell you about browser families. Every browser is based on an engine. Some use older ones like Firefox, some use newer ones like Chrome or Safari. After all, it doesn't really matter which engine a browser uses. But to categorize browsers are normally used. Firefox, Flock, Camino and SeaMonkey use the same engine named Gecko. Safari, Chrome, Chromium, Rockmelt and OmniWeb use an engine named WebKit. Safari's developer preview is also named WebKit. Internet Explorer uses its own engine Trident and Opera uses an engine named Presto. Presto, Trident and Gecko are pretty old engines dating back to the mid-90s, but keep getting updated for new web standards like HTML5, which you might have heard of. WebKit started its development in 1998 and was re-engineered by Apple and released as open source in 2003. This is why Safari and Chrome are sometimes called modern browsers because their engine is compared to the others still pretty new. Due to these categories, following screencasts will be divided into browser families, so you can easily find the one that is about your browser. Uh -huh.